Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video. Welcome back to the Penetration Testing Bootcamp. In this video, we're going to be continuing off with passive information gathering. More specifically, we're going to be talking about email harvesting with the Harvester. So the Harvester is a utility or a tool that comes pre-installed in most uh, penetration testing distributions and can also be installed on any other Linux distribution. It, it's uh, developed in Python, so it's extremely robust in terms of the environments in which you can use it. That being said, why would we want to perform email harvesting? And uh, that again is a very, very simple question to answer based on the type of target that you're trying to or the type of information you're trying to gather. So let's take two scenarios. So let's say you want to gather information about uh, the emails or you want to gather the emails of a particular organization through their domain name, or you'd like to find out more information about a person. You would like to enumerate the emails uh, and you know what company they work for or what domain they're associated with, uh, you can actually use the Harvester, which again is a passive information gathering tool. That means it's not actively interacting with the target. So you're not brute forcing uh, subdomains or anything like that because it does have the ability to enumerate hosts. Um, so it's using publicly available information and databases. So it uses search engines and various other internet resource databases like Netcraft. So let's get started with the Harvester and uh, you can launch it very easily on Kali Linux by typing in the Harvester here. And uh, you can see if it gives you this error, that means you need to specify the capital H here. And uh, that gives you the tool here. So let's open up the search uh, or the help menu here because uh, I actually want to demonstrate that right now. Let's open up the help menu. So there we are. So you can see that the options we're going to be uh, keen on is the domain option, the limit option. Uh, we can also use Google Hacks or Google Docs as well as Shodan, but that's going to come in a different video where I actually cover uh, search engine hacking uh, to a deeper extent. I already have a video on that. You can actually check that out. Uh, we also then have the source, which is going to be the most important aspect of this. So as I said, you can use, uh, you can use search engines. So the search engines, uh, what that does is if you specify Google, for example, it'll actually go through all the Google results and look for that particular uh, domain and any other emails or hosts that might be linked to that domain or that are linked to that domain. So you also have DNS Dumpster, uh, you have Bing, Baidu, which is Chinese. That's very useful. You have DuckDuckGo, LinkedIn. Again, that's great for enumerating emails of, uh, of employees that work for a particular organization. Uh, you also have Netcraft, which is very, very useful. Uh, Twitter, again, very useful. Virus Total, etc. All right, so let me give you an example of how to use this. So again, we'll type in the Harvester. I then specify the domain. In our case, let's use something like uh, Microsoft. Um, can you say Microsoft.com? Uh, and we're going to limit this to 500 results because uh, I want to keep things as clean as possible here. And then we specify uh, the, the, uh, the actual resource that we're going to be using. In this case, we're going to say, uh, let's start off with Google. Uh, sorry, that is going to be Google. And we just hit enter. All right. So it's going to tell us the target is Microsoft.com. And it's going to start searching Google. And then it's going to give us the progress over here. So searching zero results, 100, so on and so forth until 500. All right. So we're going to wait for this to complete. And let's see what results we're able to, to gather from uh, from this particular query uh, on Google. OK, so we wait for this to complete. It should be done by now. Uh, so there we are. We have no IPs found. We have no emails found, which is interesting. Uh, but we do have hosts, right? So these are the hosts. So this gives you various subdomains that are again are publicly available. You might not know of them, but this is a great way of finding them. Uh, so again, this is uh, another piece of useful information that attackers might want to find. So they're looking for subdomains that might not be pub publicly listed, but are being indexed by search engines or might be available on internet resource databases like Netcraft. So let's try LinkedIn here, for example, because I want to see if I can get uh, any emails from LinkedIn, which, is, which should be the case, actually. Uh, let's see if we can do it though. So it's going to search 100 results, 200, so on and so forth. We're going to wait for this to complete. So a uh, very, very important uh, tool to, to learn how to use. Again, it's very simple to use, but it gives you very, very useful information. And uh, it gives you an idea of the scope of a company or the organization, not the entire scope, but a good idea of what you're dealing with 
and the, the various departments of a company. So for example, you might find emails that belong to accounting, finance, uh, HR, etc. So that gives you an idea of the, uh, of the, uh, the, the organizational structure. All right, so you can see we have uh, users found, uh, not really emails in this case, but you can see we have tons of users and this gives uh, the, it gives us the actual roles uh, at Microsoft. So for example, we have investor, uh, university recruiter, account executive. So you can see you get a ton of information that's pub pub that is publicly available and can be very useful in building a profile of the, of the target and understanding how they're structured, what uh, departments they have. So that's using LinkedIn. Let's try using something like uh, Netcraft because I still haven't found any emails yet. So let's try Netcraft. Uh, we can also try another website uh, just to see what information we're able to get. So you can see with Netcraft, we're not gonna get any emails because again, it's uh, primarily a database that stores internet resource information like domains, IPs. So you can see we get uh, a ton more uh, subdomains and their IPs here, which are most likely going to point to, uh, D, uh, you know, to a DNS server that uh, again is proxying the requests. Um, so you can see we have uh, teams.microsoft.com, support, uh, go.microsoft.com, etc. You get the idea. So uh, let's try and use something like bbc.com. Um, so we're going to say bbc.com and of course that is the news uh, outlet uh, for anyone who has any funny ideas. I usually get a lot of comments about that. Uh, so we'll say Google first of all. Uh, we'll, we can also try Bing. Uh, Bing is also very useful. We get tons of results through Bing. Um, so we'll wait for this to enumerate the results. Let's see if we get any emails, any particular hosts or subdomains that we might have not heard of before or seen. So there we are, that should give us the results now. So we don't get anything from google.com. So BBC has everything locked down quite well. Uh, however, let's try and turn this into .co.uk. And uh, let's see, we, we so we don't get anything there, uh, which is interesting. Um, so let's switch that to bbc.com. Again, with Bing, we don't get anything useful. So let's try, uh, we can open up the help menu and let's see what are the search engines and internet resources we have available to us. We can try, um, let's see, let's try one more. Uh, let's try my website actually. So we'll say hsploit.com. And uh, let's see if we can get any emails. So there we are, hsploit.com, nothing through Bing. We'll try Google and uh, there we are. So it's gonna search Google for the results. Let's see if we can get anything. Now, sometimes uh, you want to keep your search, uh, your, your searches slow and uh, you want to have a, an interval between them because uh, many search engines will actually detect too many requests coming from your IP and they may block the requests. And you know, you, you have the occasional case of having a capture, which I think is what is happening to me now, but you guys get the overall idea. You can get tons of information about a company, their domains, and again, you, as you saw through LinkedIn, we can get various roles, uh, various users that have uh, that are actually linked to Microsoft in our particular case and can be very useful to build a profile of all the employees, which can then be used to perform social engineering, perform phishing uh, campaigns, etc. You get the idea. All right. So that's going to be it for this video. And I'll be seeing you in the next video.